in, in good academic fashion, let's uh, get started about 10 minutes late. Uh, <laughs> Hello, uh, so my name is Ryan Cordell. Um, you've all received emails from me uh, many times over the past few months. I'm really thrilled to see you all here actually in person. Um, there's always that moment organizing things when you're sitting in the room before anyone arrives, just sort of wondering whether anyone's actually going to show up, and then they do. So um, I I'm, really, I'm really excited to have you all here. Uh, I'm looking forward to a fantastic two days um, with you, and I, I wanted to just uh, say a few words uh, about the event and uh, we have a few other folks uh, from different groups that have supported this event that wanted to to greet you all and to say uh, say a few words as well um, first uh, I will say uh, if you if you happen to tweet um, this is the hashtag <laughs> our, our good telegraph operator is obviously tweeting about the conference um, it's pretty short and sweet, um, but feel free, uh, of course, to, to tweet about the, the sessions as, as they're ongoing. And in those tweets, you might mention the fact that we are live streaming the event, and that you can see it right here. You can also get there from the, the conference website. Uh, this is part of the, um, well, the Rare Book School didn't require that it be live streamed, but they required that it be recorded. Um, and we decided that we heard from so many people that wanted to be here but couldn't uh, that it would be great to have it online so that more people could participate virtually. And I hope that some of those people, if they're watching, will also uh, add in their own questions and things of that nature through the, the Twitter conversation. So uh, this event is happening really because of three groups. And uh, we're going to say a little bit about each of those groups. Uh, I'm going to start actually with the Northeastern University Humanity Center because the, the director of the Humanity Center, uh, Lori Lefkowitz, is here. Um, but she has to go to another meeting very soon. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to let her say a few words about the center. Um, Lori. Yeah. Meeting to meeting, it's the story of my life now. Um, uh, on behalf of the Humanity Center, I'm very, we're very privileged to, um, to support faculty research and collaborations of this kind. So it's um, my honor to uh, welcome you, and um, we are honored to host you. We are honored to participate with New Lab and with the Rare Book School in um, hosting an opportunity like this. So I want to first of all um, thank Ryan Cordell, my colleague in the English department, and Elizabeth Dillon for undertaking research on the frontier of the humanities and for um, being so keen on building bridges between digital humanities and traditional humanities. I mean, that is just the kind of innovative work that we like to see happen. Um, the Humanities Center has all kinds of programs, and for those of you at Northeastern, I would particularly like to underscore that Ryan participates in a, a faculty fellowship program that the theme of which this year is viral culture. Um, and next year, our program will be uh, Space and Place. So I would encourage you and your graduate students to apply for that opportunity. Um, to all of you here, I hope that, uh, that you have meaningful, satisfying, productive conversations over, these, over this, uh, this two-day occasion, that you learn a lot, and that you um, develop new and deepened friendships. Um, and uh, I look forward to hearing uh, to hearing about it. So welcome everybody. Um, thank you to my colleagues. Thank you to all of you for coming and um, and have fun. Thank you, Lori. Um, so in addition to being an assistant professor in the English department here at Northeastern, I'm also a, a core faculty member in a new center that we are building here, the, the new lab for text maps and networks. Um, and the co-director of the center, uh, Elizabeth maddock Dillon, uh, has also uh, been working with me on, on a project that we'll talk about at this gathering. Um, and I'd like to invite her to say a few words about the new lab and what we're, what we're up to here at Northeastern. Yeah, that's okay. Thanks, Ryan. Um, it's uh, it's really great to see this um, conference materialize, and I, I want to just offer a warm welcome to all of you who are here. Um, I'm very excited about what's going to transpire among us in the next few days. Um, I, I 
I want to preface my remarks about the new lab with, um, with um, just a brief comment. Uh, uh, I'm not sure this is the time or the place, but I don't um, I sort of stop myself from saying that I just want to um, recognize the loss, recent loss of a member of our larger community in um, literary studies, Jose Munoz, who um, passed yesterday. He was a uh, really important, um, amazing figure in the field of uh, queer theory and performance studies. And um, he spoke here uh, last spring, in, in addition to, to being um, you know, a very well-known um, figure and, um, and, and a friend. He was invited by our graduate students to be the keynote speaker at the, um, at the annual conference that they hold. And he spoke about his re recent work on the Brown Commons, which was amazing. Um, but just as amazing was the, his remarkable generosity in engaging with um, the students, his excitement about um, keynoting for a graduate student conference and his engagement um, in the ideas and the work of all of the graduate students. So um, I really just want to invoke his, his brilliance and his spirit of generosity um, as we start this conference. And, and I can only hope to, um, that, that we can collectively emulate that as well. So. Um, now I want to move on to the new lab. Um, I, I'm going to stop this so that you don't get seasick. Um, but uh, the new lab is a, um, a new center at Northeastern University. Um, the new lab protects maps and networks, and it brings together um, the digital humanities and the computational social sciences. And for those of you who are not familiar with the computational social sciences, um, one way to think about that is uh, what that is is essentially big data in uh, in the field of social sciences. So, um, if it used to be the case that one understood human behavior by inviting 25 undergraduates to sit in a room and press buttons while they looked at pictures, um, it's now the case that one harvests data from millions of websites, uh, tweets, um, uh, mobile phone data. And, um, and uses that to analyze uh, human behavior. So that's what computational so social science is using big data. And there's um, a, 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 an analogy and a connection in a couple of ways to digital humanities. Um, one way to think about digital humanities is, uh, is thinking about um, literature and humanities studies um, in relationship to large corpora of data. So in, in relationship to large uh, textual corpora the other thing about um, computational social sciences uh, that I've learned is that um, one of the challenges of their new large amounts of data is that they have to deal with what's called unstructured data, um, which is what we also know as language. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and those of us who work in, in literary studies uh, have a lot of ideas and knowledge about language. So, there's a um, interesting intersection between digital humanities and computational social science. Um, and one of those intersections is in the field of uh, network analysis. Um, and uh, so our, our center is organized around thinking about text maps and networks in those areas. Um, I, uh, a little bit more about the um, center and some of what we're doing. Um, the Part of the excitement of what's going on at our center is that we have, um, I'm happy to say that we've pulled together um, a group of faculty working in diverse fields. So um, people in English, uh, people in um, computer science, people in um, data visualization, um, people working in uh, social media, um, uh, computational linguistics, um, what else can I add? That's a social media guy. <laughs> so uh, uh, business, um, uh, Julia Flanders, who many of you uh, may know, who's a, really a world expert on um, TEI, um, uh, historians. Um, so we have, uh, and then we have a terrific crew of um, graduate students who are so affiliated with the, um, with the lab, some of whom are here today, at least one of whom. Jim, you can raise your hand. Anyone else? Did I see Liz? 
Ben, Liz, saw our graduate student fellows, um, and Ryan may say this later, but um, they're also uh, native informants for the purposes of this conference, so if you get lost, um, uh, ask one of them or, or Ryan or myself for, um, for directions. Um, I want to talk just a minute about um, some of the projects that we have going on um, at the new lab. Uh, the Early Caribbean Digital Archive is a project that I'm um, working on together with my colleague Nicole Aljo, as well as um, uh, Liz Hopwood and Ben Doyle, um, who have been doing extraordinary work on putting together a, uh, a digital archive of early Caribbean materials, um, which are now really dispersed across uh, huge numbers of archives, in part because of the, the history of imperialism in that area. Um, Julia Flanders is the editor of the Digital Humanities Quarterly that's now um, housed here. The data modeling project is one that she's brought as well. Um, TAPAS is a TEI archiving uh, project. So um, this is a, an intriguing project that's just getting underway for the many people who have um, done a TEI edition of a text. Um, and then the question is, now what? Where will that live or what, what can we do with this? So this um, TEI, TAPAS, is um, creating a, an aggregated archive of, um, of TEI texts, which, um, it, as I would imagine, will only become increasingly important and, and grow with time. Um, the Women Writers uh, Project is uh, uh, headed by Julia Flanders, one of the largest long-term digital humanities projects. Infectious Texts, um, which uh, Ryan Cordell has led the way on, and you'll hear more about um, today. Uh, the R Marathon, um, a project that Ryan and I have been involved in together with um, Jim McGrath, uh, is a project, a, a crowdsourced digital archive of um, materials around the Boston Marathon bombing um, that is, uh, um, I, I urge you to check it out. It's uh, we have great partnerships with the city, with um, uh, WBUR. Um, we're doing oral histories um, in conjunction with WBUR, which will um, be airing um, uh, in coming months on WBUR. Um, we have partnerships with The Globe, um, with Channel 5, um, and with the Digital Public Library of America. So, um, so these are just a few of the things that we are um, up to. Um, and I want to uh, close by encouraging you to, to um, uh, check out what we have going on here. Um, follow our uh, Twitter feed that um, Jim does a great job of um, maintaining, and it's now my job to uh, call him out at every such moment as these to make sure that he, in fact, is tweeting what's going on. Um, so, uh, um, so stop by the uh, website. The last thing that I want to say, and, um, and I'm guessing that um, Ryan will say more about this, but um, one of the things that I find particularly exciting about this event is that um, at its core, it aims together to bring together people who are working in new ways in the digital humanities and scholars who have um, long-standing engagement and commitments to the field of 19th century American literature. And too often, I think it's the case that, um, that the question of, uh, of digital humanities scholars speaking to scholars who are working in those fields in, um, I don't know what you call it now, traditional manner, <laughs> that, there's, uh, that there's not enough um, uh, intersection of those discussions. And I'm, I'm tremendously excited about um, the possibility of moving those discussions forward at this event over the next two days. So, um, so welcome. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, let me switch back here. So the last sponsor that we're going to talk about, but really the the um, sponsor that uh, is res is most responsible for this event, uh, would be the Rare Book School. So bo both uh, uh, I and my uh, co-organizer Raylan Barnes are uh, part of an inaugural class of Mellon Fellows uh, in critical bibliography at the Rare Book School, um, and part of that program gives us some funds to host a an event at our home institution related to our, our research interests. And so that's 
that was this event. We're the very first of those events, actually. The, the class of Mellon Fellows that haven't had one yet. So if this goes badly. Um, <laughs> in, in any case, I, I was going to ask uh, Ray Lynn to say a little bit more about the Rare Book School and about the, the Mellon Fellows program, um, if she would. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Raylan Barnes, and I'm a historian at Harvard and at U.S. History Scene. So as Ryan um, pointed out, we are part of the Andrew W. Mellon Fellowship of Scholars in Critical Bibliography, longest name ever. Um, the Rare Book School, for those of you who don't know, was originally founded at Columbia University in conjunction with um, their Rare Book and Manuscript Division. It's now ho housed at the University of Virginia um, since approximately 1992. Um, and so what this fellowship does, it's very unique, is it brings together graduate students, um, postdoctoral fellows, and also junior faculty all in the same program. There's approximately 20 of us this year, um, and there will, there will be a new cohort of about 20 um, that are currently um, being selected. and. The fellowship gives a, a wide variety of opportunities. So the first thing that's offered is the ability to take three courses with the Rare Book School um, over the course of three years. They're always offered in the summer and early fall, and they're only a week long. So they're really great for academics. You can fit them into your schedule. Um, they have You can check out the website, but a huge variety of both sort of um, Things I would be interested for people who are interested in digitizing the archives, digitizing rare books, but also more traditional hands-on um, scholarship. Uh, let's see. So as Ryan said, we are the first seminar or symposium that's being produced. You have funds that are available to host um, events at your own home institution and also in collaboration with other fellows. Um, and finally, um, there's the bibliographic field schools. So I went to the first one last month in October, which a, a cohort of about 10 of us all traveled to New York, and we went to the New York Public Library, Columbia, um, all sorts of different archives for rare books, and got to get into the archives and do some hands-on work together. And it's really interesting because, it, although we're going to be talking about American uh, literary history today, these are people from all time periods and um, geographic regions that are all working together. And so a lot of interesting methodologies come out of that collaboration um, in a way that I've not encountered in any other academic um, environment. So I'd really recommend it if you're interested. Please come and talk to us. We'd be happy to give you more information about how you can get involved. Uh, and actually, you may have seen there's some materials about the Rare Book School uh, on the table as you came in, both about the courses that are being offered this coming year and also about the, the fellowship. Um, as Ray Lynn said, if you want to talk about the fellowship, come chat with us. Uh, the organizer of the fellowship program, Donna C., encouraged us to, uh, encouraged us to encourage you to inquire about the, uh, inquire about the fellowship if it's something that, that interests you. It's, it's a pretty incredible uh, program. Um, and so one of the things that that program enables uh, is uh, for the fellows to put together an event. And so in some ways, this event feels to me incredibly selfish mm -hmm. because w what I did is thought, well, who would I like to talk to? <laughs> and uh, what, 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 what kinds of people might I want to get together? And uh, as Elizabeth hinted, I, you know, my scholarly identity is... Uh, kind of oddly straddles uh, several fields. Uh, I do work that uh, I talk about with other scholars of American literature in the 19th century. Um, I, I do work that overlaps with media studies and thinking about media technologies. Um, and, and I do work that is digital humanities. And I found myself going to different kinds of conferences and having entirely separate conversations and seeing these really phenomenal digital humanities projects that were um, looking at the archive, looking at uh, American literature in these fantastic new ways um, that were never seen, cited, talked about, even known uh, by any of the scholars who I greatly respect who work in American literature. And, and, the, other, and uh, the same is true in the other direction, which is to say I read these brilliant books by American literature scholars that are not cited when they should be 
uh, when you read an article about a digital humanities project that, that touches on the same kind of intellectual interest. And so my motivation for trying to put this particular event together was to really self-consciously bring together people working in these different fields uh, to try and sort of force some conversations to happen, I guess. Um, uh, this may be the wrong way to put it, but to really uh, say, look, I, I, I know that you guys are working on things that are complementary, so let's talk about that. Um, so we have some uh, specific goals for this event, which are going to come up here in a second. <laughs> We want to instigate compelling and productive conversations among what we see, at least, as complementary disciplines. Um, we might decide over the course of the next two days that they are not at all complementary, but we think they are. So we're going we're to test it out. And we want, to, uh, we want to suggest and foster, hopefully, some future collaborations, not necessarily with us, but with the people in this room. And, and that's it, really. Um, that's, <laughs> and th 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 that's the extent of our goals for this, these next two days. Um, yeah, because really, we invited you all because you seem like smart, cool people we'd want to spend two days talking about. That, I mean, that's really it. Um, and that's also why, uh, that, uh, as I said many times, uh, we're trying to encourage uh, a kind of collaborative and conversational atmosphere. I did get an email from someone uh, who said, you know, this actually looks quite a bit like a traditional conference. And I, and I copped to that. I said, yes, you're right. Actually, it ended up kind of looking a lot like a traditional conference, partly because we got so many great proposals and we wanted people to have a chance to talk about these, these great projects. And so we tried to fit them in. But to that end, uh, we have asked you all to keep these presentations a bit briefer than is typical in conferences. We want to save more time than is typical for questions uh, in the audience, conversation with the audience, among panelists. And we have tried to put together a few of these less traditional sessions, these working groups, uh, lots of roundtables, things of that nature. Um, a few of you have, so I wanted to just briefly um, talk about the, the sort of arc of the next two days. You've all seen the calendar, um, so I don't need to rehash it. No one's going to be able to read it if I make it too small. But for the most part, we're going to hang out in this room. Most of what we do is going to be right in here. Um, and that was another actual conscious decision, which was actually to try and keep the group together rather than dispersing into a bunch of tiny uh, um, sessions where people might have great conversations, but the group wouldn't really know what was going on in all those rooms. So with a few exceptions where we're going to break up into two, we're going to try and keep this whole group together and hopefully have conversations that will thread from session to session to session so that instead of feeling like distinct moments, it will feel like one working symposium. Um, so for the most part, we're hanging out in here. Again, I, I didn't even want to have any sessions where we split up, but ultimately I was like, I, I, I just, we have to let these people talk about this work. It's really cool work. Uh, so, you know, these are always the perils of putting together something like this. Um, in any case, uh, the few things that I wanted to talk about is this afternoon, we do have this poster session slash reception. Um, this is going to be over in the Curry uh, Student Center Ballroom, which is a big room. And the idea here, these are people who want to show off these digital projects that they're working on. If any of you happen to be at Sharp uh, this year, you will have gone to a similar session. We've got really big monitors so that the people can, uh, who are presenting can uh, show you the, the guts of what they're working on. Well, they might not want to show you the guts. They can show you whatever they want to show you about the project they're working on. Um, walk you through the questions that they're trying to answer, how they're trying to answer them. Uh, and there will also be there will be food and beverages, so you can eat, uh, feel refreshed while you while you look at those projects. So that's one of the less um, poster sessions are not they're they're becoming more common in humanities conferences, but they're still not very common in humanities conferences. Um, and then tomorrow we have a session devoted to, to working groups. And this is my attempt, uh, those of you who are in the DH world might have heard about uh, this thing called a that camp, the, the humanities and technology camp, which are these unconferences where you don't present papers, but you come prepared to talk about something that you're interested in talking about. Uh, this is my attempt to kind of sneak an unconference session into uh, a more traditional conference. Um, 
I don't know what's going to go into these working groups yet. And actually, I wanted to start that conversation right now. I want to know what you're interested in, in talking about. Um, I'm hoping that over, the, over today, we can figure out what those working groups are going to look like. And I will put them on the schedule, and we will have them tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to ask for some bravery now. Um, someone who knows what they'd like to talk about in a working group of this kind, with this group, people who are all interested in American literature and archives and digital stuff, uh, what, what kind of thing would you like to do in a working group? Let's get some suggestions on the table. Jean, yeah. Um, it seems like from the, pa from the paper topics that a lot of us are working with archival data and with library catalogs. And if I, I'm always interested in wondering how I can give my clean data back to the people who gave it to me in the first place after I've done all this work to make it geolocated and visualized and normalized in some sense. So if other people are interested in brainstorming ways to do that, um, whether it's there's, there's social and technical components to it. So. Give, give me a good title for that one, Jean. Um, <laughs> giving back clean data. <laughs> Okay, I saw the other hands, yeah. <clears throat> I'd like to talk about uh, the advent of keyboarding and its uh, context on uh, textual transmission. In other words, um, this is both a analog and a digital uh, interest, but it's the, uh, if you will, kind of innocent compliance of writing to, uh, in essence, coding via a keyboard. So what would we call this? Keyboarding and... I have <coughs> token key or uh, keyboarding advent of. Okay. Other ideas for things you would want to talk to other folks in this room about? Yeah. I'm just in having maybe a more meta discussion about how our research questions and how we're formulating them are changing as we're developing these tools. As we get into the new questions keep emerging, so how are we experiencing those questions and how are we working with them? Typing in public, I always make a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. in, in yes. Uh, Keyboarding. Teaching. <laughs> teaching. Teaching any specific aspect of teaching? Well, teaching at the intersection of American literature and DH. I mean, what, are the, what are the pedagogical ramifications of DH in the field of American literature? Great. Um, maybe something like data visualization, but in terms of thinking about what the thing is. I'm coming from like a, a musical background, so when we think about you know, what data is and zeros and ones and how we conceptualize that in sound, but I mean, you know, that's, that would be interesting to hear. You know, I'm, I'm actually realizing now we have five rooms scheduled, but we technically have also the two presentation rooms, so we could have as many as seven of these. So, other ideas for things you'd like to talk about with this group? I'm, I'm, I'm really curious. How many people here have, have been to that camp? A lot of you. You guys all, all know this. So the thing that always happens is you talk about like uh, different ideas that can be put together into one session. So that, that seems like teaching uh, might encompass both undergrad and graduate curriculum. Does that seem fair? Or do you, are you thinking of sort of a separate yeah, se session on grad study? Cool. <coughs> Have to be other ideas. This is a big group. I know I didn't tell you I was going to do this today. So, yeah. Um, the role of the archive in facilitating the tour.
it seems like that and that might be related in some ways to Jean's uh, idea as well. I might decide to bring those together. I think one question that, that people often have in the, in the field is, um, is about getting started. Right. Um, getting started in DH. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess maybe the, adding to that topic models of collaborative project development because that's another kind of learning curve thing I think for a lot of people who come out of a traditional scholarly background. Can you say that one more time, Augusta? Models of collaborative development. Cool. Yeah, Jim. Uh, maybe something on DH and uh, more contemporary literature and literary projects. I mean, I know like uh, the copyright issues and, and things like that are, are challenges and just thinking about what people yeah. have. And I'm going to say contemporary material, because yeah. we have folks here interested in sound and other mm -hmm. issues that, that definitely overlap. Um, yeah, that's one thing. Um, just a brief correction. I know you're not all interested in the 19th century. This is American lit very broadly, um, 18th to the present, maybe even before. Do we have anyone working on pre-18th century? Yeah, a few. OK. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, would be working with other kinds of programs like library schools um, and how you know digital humanities works uh, with and alongside um, you know, people who are doing professional degrees in computer science. Yeah, I wonder if we can bring this together into something like. Um, yeah, also this is about collaborative collaborative work, but um, um, well, we'll make it as big as we can. Um, yeah, because it, it strikes me that, you know, what is the role of the archive? How might we bridge these gaps between schools? This all seems like a, a nice conversation. Yeah. Our question to go under the scholarly questions might be about um, what counts as a text? What the can new canons look like? Maybe to go with that, what counts as an argument? Yeah. <laughs> How about just what counts? <laughs> <laughs> Other other ideas we'd like uh, we'd like on the table for these? Yeah. I'm not really sure how to put this, but it, it, it seems to me like most of these are, are sort of DH focused. Yeah. Um, so give us something that's not. I wonder if there might be a way to go in the other direction as well. Um, speaking to I don't know what to call them either sort of traditional analog audiences about DH work. Mm -hmm. Around materiality. Mm -hmm. One way, both digital and physical, means something around the Would hit on that. I'll call that like materiality of texts and yeah. So what you are all no doubt noticing is that we have one of these sessions, and you're going to want to go to like five of these. You're going to have to pick. Um, that that's just the uh, that's just the pain. The pain that comes with having uh, having great ideas about these things. So I'm just curious regarding that. Um, mm -hmm. Is this are these little breakout sessions also going to be live streamed, or is this like a closed door private thing, or how does that work? Uh, I don't believe they're all going to be live streamed. We do, we don't have that many cameras. Um, I will. What we can do, uh, and I hadn't really articulated this, but at, at that camps, uh, someone in every room is responsible for taking notes about the session and then making them public and we could certainly inf uh, you know ask people to do that right. yeah. are we going to melt these down a little bit maybe uh, I'd like to throw uh, advent of keyboarding into the last one materialities of text and tech 
That's great. Yeah, fantastic. So I should say the reason that you didn't know we were going to do this now is because we were going to do this at the beginning of the session, but we talked about it and realized we wanted the whole of the session for people to actually have the session. So well, that's why we're doing it now. Great. I wonder if giving back clean data could go into collaboration too. Does that seem fair, Jean? Sure. <coughs> if, if, anyone, I mean, if anybody else wants to like work on a way of thinking about it, <coughs> how to make it happen completely as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I mean, the other part of these sessions is that they could really be instructive as well. If there's a particular tool that you would love someone to show you, teach you, uh, you could ask. And if there's someone here willing to teach it, then we could set up a session like that as well. So. The visualization could be a component of the materialization as a kind of like inverse or complementary question to that. Well, Matt Kirschenbaum would say that our data is a material thing, right? So that makes sense to me. <laughs> Other ideas, thoughts, things you want to throw up here? At the moment we have one, two, three, four, five, six. At the moment we have six, which is really sort of ideal for the number of rooms we have. I might not even have any hard decisions to make. Okay, so we can leave this for now. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make this uh, document public, and I'm going to put a link on the conference site. So if you have ideas, other things you want to throw in, either under one of these categories or things you want to propose over the course of today, you can just open the document, and you can add your suggestions. I ask you not to delete anything that someone else has added. <laughs> You're on the honor system for that one. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll look uh, over what people have put in tonight and then figure out what, what makes the most sense for tomorrow, OK? Um, all right, that's great. That was easier than I thought. I don't know that I expected so many of you to have that camp experience. That was part of it. Um, OK, so really, that's, that's, uh, that is what I have for our opening session. Does anyone have questions that have not been answered about what's going to be happening over the next few days? What's the source of this image? Ah, yeah. So this this is from after the Civil War. This is one of my favorite um, images. Um, I use it in a lot of presentations. And oh gosh, now I'm blanking on the illustrator's name. And I use it in almost every talk I give. Someone here knows the illustrator. It's a famous illustrator. No. Okay. No one knows it. Uh, what, what I like what I like about this image. I mean, it's it's also really problematic. But it's called the Progress of the Century. This is from the 19th century, uh, again, post-Civil War. And these are supposed to be illustrating all of the technological improvements that have sort of changed the way that human beings communicate and relate to one another, right? So we have uh, binding here. Like it, We sort of move from the oldest to the newest is the idea. Uh, the steam press, the telegraph, the railroad, the, uh, the steamboat. Um, and then the telegraph I like because it's both liberty and union uh, now and forever one and inseparable, right? So post-Civil War, this, method, this idea of union, and then glory to God in the highest on earth, peace and goodwill to men. So the enunciation <laughs> of the new technology uh, is, is the idea here. So for me, I, like this is an evocative image of this relationship between technology and text and, uh, and communication and media that, that I find uh, useful. So. That's the source of it. I used it because I like it. Um, so you take it from the 70s, the 1870s. Yeah, this is from 18. This is from 1870s. Yeah. Okay. So before the uh, some of the uh, uh, letterpress keyboard keyboarding. Oh, before like the um, the linotype, you mean? Uh, yeah, before yeah. Uh, any of the real uh, advent of typewriting either. 
Oh, that's right. There's no typewriter here. Yeah, I, well, I didn't really consider that. They're precursors, but uh, on the the poor bookbinder beating the books, I still can't <laughs> figure out why they did that. <laughs> <laughs> There's someone here who knows why they beat the books. You know, don't you, James? Why they beat the books? Um, to make them thinner and flatter. <laughs> <laughs> It really, it really um, compresses the paper and makes, we, we wouldn't recognize an unbeaten book. It would be kind of spongy and, and, and light. How do they keep from setting off the ink? Pardon me? How do they keep from setting off the ink? They wait till it's dry. <laughs> All right, we are already deep in the weeds. All right. so, uh, so why don't we, uh, we'll take a break. It'll be a little bit longer than our other breaks, but this will give people a chance to, to talk who haven't had a chance to say hello yet. Um, and then we will come back together for our, our first session in this room. So yeah, you don't have to go far. <laughs>